Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to show you what we did to eliminate spring breakage. Here's a model that's going to have an appliance with a spring to kick that central over more toward the midline. Now here's one version of a spring design. It's just simply a wire. This is an O2O wire. Wraps around the distal aspect and the, it would be waxed up to about right here so that that would be the working part of it. The rest of it would either be in acrylic or soldered to a fixed appliance. But now if we have a helix on it, we have the same design and we would either put it in to acrylic right past the helix and wax the helix and the active part of the spring or put the heat protective compound on there and solder it from the helix back and we would have a, uh, a single helix spring and it's got more resiliency. Uh, you can grab it with a with a plier and you can just see it's just got a lot of spring to it. Well this spring has a lot of spring to it as well but these springs break. These springs don't. <laughs> okay, here's a here's another model, another kind of spring. Uh, we could have just a regular, like a finger spring, an S spring, Z spring, whatever you want to call it, that would push that incisor out. And there again, we'd have it waxed up to about right here, and then it would be free from there on into the acrylic or soldered if it's a soldered appliance. But why don't we instead have the same spring, but put a helix in it? right where it goes into the acrylic. So we would wax it right up to there and then that part would go into the acrylic and um, it would have that same spring kind of action, a little more resiliency than otherwise. Now what happens there? What goes on? Well when you have a spring, like you have a wire here and it goes into acrylic, like let's say that the plier is, uh, pliers are the acrylic and the wire is sticking out of it and it's going to be a spring and you bend it to activate the spring it has some bend to it so what it's doing is it's bending right in that one area where it's either soldered or comes out of the acrylic and what that is is the grain structure within the wire is compressed on the inside and it's stretched on the outside. So if it goes, if it's a hard bend and it goes back and forth enough times, it's going to break pretty easily. But if you were to have a longer wire like this, they're still going to be compressed on the inside and stretched on the outside, but it's not going to be quite as radical. So let me show you um, a spring here. I've got one here that's this is a single helix that I wound and I'm going to put a mark on it right at the helix with a marker there and then let's unwind it and just see how much wire we're talking about here. Well, let me get my plier in there. <laughs> okay, just going to unwind it. And kind of straighten it out as best I can. And now let's measure it down to where the mark was with a Bowley gauge. It's not very straight. Kind of hard to straighten out a wire. Okay, you can see the mark and you can see the end of the wire. And I'm going to measure it. And look at that. That is 10 millimeters. So you've got, instead of it being bent right in one little place, you've got it like 10 millimeters being distributed out evenly. So you've got more of this than you have that. Now let's take a wire that's got a helix in it already. And then on the other end it doesn't have a helix. I'm using the same wire for this so you don't think I'm doing some kind of hocus pocus with different wires. I'm going to hold it in just a utility plier and I'm going to bend this back and forth a few times. Now let's see, it breaks pretty quickly. So now that's more stress than you would have with a spring, granted, but still, you see my point, it's under stress. Now let's do the same thing with this, and I'm going to hold it right at the helix where it would be soldered or where it's coming out of the acrylic, and then let's just 
bend it and see how many times it takes for it to break. <laughs> okay, let's go back over here and see. Well, it breaks in just a few times. Let's go back over here. Give it some more. And eventually it does break. But you see you get a lot more bends, a lot more durability out of a spring that's got a helix in it than one that doesn't. So very simply how we eliminated spring breakage is we just simply put a helix in it anytime we could. Well I hope that helps you out. If you're new to the field or if you're training people who are new, we have a program for you. It's called Orthodontic Laboratory Basics. You can check it out on our website at ortholabvideos.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.